Hey Jackals, I was a bit short on time to make the lower thread template video that I said I'll make and it will be up on Tuesday, but for today I'll show you how to make an outlined cube in DaVinci Resolve 17 and 18. Now let's get digital. So we'll make a fusion composition, open the media pool, right click in it, make a new fusion composition, you can give it a name, change the duration if you want, make it and put it onto the timeline. Then select it, also put the playhead over it and go into the fusion page. We need to use the 3D shapes, you'll find them here, shape 3D, you also need the render node so that you can display it, connect it and we can connect it to the media out. By default you may think this is a cube but it's actually a plane as you can see, so we'll change this to a cube. Now this still looks like a plane, so we need to add a camera 3D and we'll connect it with the merge node and now we need to display the merge node, I'll display it on the left, select the camera and using Alt and the middle mouse wheel button you can see that the camera is inside the cube, so you need to pull it out. Up here you'll have the move and rotate tool. So I'll simply rotate it a bit and then I'll position it again so that I get the perspective of the cube. So something like this. Now we currently don't see much, it's just white. And to see something we'll add some lights. So control space to open the select tools, light, we can add some ambient light. We'll simply connect it and in order for you to see any changes, go to the render node and enable lighting and shadows. Now it doesn't matter where you move this because it's an ambient light, so it doesn't matter where it is, it'll always light up the same. So what I'll add is some directional light. And with this one, I'll put one here and I'll make maybe two copies. Connect this one here, I'll move this one to this point. It's currently the same because it only affects this side. So we have to go to the transform and move it around. Maybe from this side and I'll put this one over the top. And I also need to connect it. So maybe something like this. We can now see that this is a cube and if I just make a simple animation Go to the first keyframe, transform, and we'll animate all of the rotations. Go to the end and we can simply type in maybe 180, minus 180, and 180. And if you want to increase the clip duration, you can then simply go to the spline, have this node selected. Also you can enable this, so it only shows the selected node. Select all of the rotations, click zoom to fit, then select all of the points, and we'll use set relative. So now the animation will go continuously, once we increase the clip duration. So as you can see it animates at this point, it's a little bit fast, but if I now increase the duration it will continue animating from this point on. So now back in the fusion composition, we have a couple of options how we can display this. We can go to the shape 3D, controls and enable the wireframe, but in render node we have to use an OpenGL. You can also disable this here and go to the render node and enable it here, you will get the same results. But for ease of use, we'll just enable it here. And we have a lot of these subdivisions. And you'll want to use this as number one. Now it doesn't look the brightest. If this doesn't work for you, you can also use some spotlights maybe. And it's a bit hard to work like this, so I'll disable it for now. And the way that you'll get the best result or see what you actually light up, is not do it in this way, but use an edge detect after this comes out, 
So let's use an edge detect node. And now we can actually see what we have. It's a little bit strange here, but that's okay. And if you want, you can also leave it like this with the spotlight. I think it looks okay, so I'll just leave it. Now, as you can see, this is a cube, but we don't see the edges behind it. And I actually have no idea what this is. So maybe if I adjust the angles. So I guess the angle does affect it. Now we can include the wireframe again. And it will look something like this. Now it's a shame that we have the middle lines inside the cube. And I didn't find a way to remove them. So if you know how you can do that easily, let me know. So we do have that. We have the edge detect. And you can adjust the brightness if you want. And just play around with the settings. And then lastly, you'll use something like a soft glow or just any type of glow. And also what you may want to do is add the background node after the edge detect. So we change the color, you can use a gradient. Now we don't really see a lot of edges, so what I actually did is put a bitmap node after the edge detect. So bitmap and I change the channel from alpha to luminance and you will get much thicker lines as you can see and if need be you can also change the values to get just what you want. Now this is one way how you can do it and the other way is simply to disable the wireframe and this will give you the outline. But in this case, the bitmap does play the role, as you could see. So if I connect it here, you can simply adjust the values again to get only the edges. And this also includes the spotlight edge. But if you made the spotlight bigger so it goes over the cube, you won't see the edge of the spotlight. But I think in this case, this actually looks cooler than what I had previously, so I'll leave it like this. And that's how I can make an outline of a cube by using the shape 3 d node, a camera, a bunch of lights, edge detect, and a bitmap for a unique result. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video that will be up on Tuesday, and hit the bell notification icon so you know, and you don't miss the next video. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackals, Keep it digital.